Hello there Pixel Pushers, it's Sadiq Hussain here with another tutorial on uh, Affinity Photo and this is a direct follow up from the previous one, uh, the last one that we did, did and I uh, promised that we would come back and uh, we did some manipulation on this particular photograph but I said that we would do a sky replacement so here we are, sky replacement using Affinity Photo fairly simple, the main thing is A, to have a stock library of sky photography which is something I advocated to all photographers is whenever you get the opportunity take as many uh, different skies different seasons different times of the day different times of the year uh, photography of skies from all sorts of different positions but make sure they're predominantly sky with just a slither of um, the foreground and the horizon at the bottom of the frame so that you've got them when you need them and that's what uh, I've been doing for years and I've got a whole slew of them and um, uh, and the other thing of course is that to have a a suitable image where the sky isn't so interesting and you want to replace it the main thing that takes the time is the selection of the foreground so in this case we've got uh, these buildings some older buildings and some brand new buildings uh, in the city and it's the selecting of them that's the key sometimes the selection is quicker sometimes it takes a bit longer so if you get the selection right the rest of it is plain sailing so let's just wind this back right the back to the beginning okay and we want to start if you remember that's the image that we had that we started with okay and uh, we'd already removed some blemishes and things so really what we're looking to is replace that sky in the background okay um, in fact let me just move that Yeah, so we'll uh, first of all we need to select uh, this foreground, okay? And uh, the uh, tool I always go to is the selection brush tool. It works really well, so there's no reason why we shouldn't use it. Make sure that the brush size using the square bracket keys is appropriate. So it's not not too big and not too small, just so that you can do a selection of the foreground. Now don't worry too much about getting it inaccurate initially okay because we can refine that okay now when you get to the fine areas just reduce the size of the brush so when you're pushing it to the edge make sure that um, uh, snap to edges at the top here is selected when you're using the uh, selection brush because that really helps it to magnetically latch onto that edge okay now obviously you could go in and uh, fine-tune that manually but what I would actually do is say I would say because down here you will have for example these trees we want to select that lamppost uh, street light we want to select it hasn't quite done it down here uh, accurately but uh, I'm going to refine that by if I just click on refine and it places a mat around what I've selected and really now's your tight chance to go around and make sure that you see has have all the edges been selected now they haven't because here it hasn't so all we do is just make sure that the brush is the right size and we paint over that edge again if it selects it better fine okay now that hasn't done it really well but we're going to refine that again so just go over that's it that's better but this one here would be better if we choose down here foreground because we, we what we want to tell it tell the software is this is definitely foreground this is definitely building not the background not the sky and we just want to paint up to and near to the edge but not actually the edge okay and uh, and clearly you'd want to take a bit more time than I'm going to here 
because this is for demonstration purposes and we don't want the video obviously to get too long okay so you would just go through you could probably just come a bit closer to the edge and obviously zooming in uh, really helps as well so let's just move around the building so really we could tell the software here well this is definitely foreground so don't confuse it with the background it's because the edge of this building has got glass um, um, walls and of course that's confusing the selection because you can see the sky through the glass this is a glass edge uh, and of course that makes it that much more difficult but of course you'll be faced with these difficulties and knowing how to use the software to solve those difficulties or get around those difficult difficulties is really what this channel is all about so it's about finding a solution to a problem but within the software itself okay so do a, a little bit at a time don't overstretch it and and, and 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 do a big area and of course if you get it wrong you can redo it like that there that's gone over and we don't want that so we click on background and we basically tell the software the reverse the opposite and and that's better it's selected that it's refined that selection so you could obviously spend time getting that absolutely spot on and that's what you should do okay and then we just go over here until that's foreground so it's just switching between foreground and background or the mat line which is the edge if uh, the, the edge thing works really well over hair feathers trees branches things like that which i'll show you in a moment when we get to the branch so this is the bit that takes the time not the actual replacement of the sky itself it's the selection of your foreground that takes the time so don't worry about taking an extra five ten minutes on this part because it will pay dividends further down the line we're almost there now and of course once you've done the selection you can save the selection in the channels uh, palette um, and you can play around with how you use that selection by whether you replace the foreground or whether you change apply an adjustment layer to your selection or whether you replace the sky but the selection is the time consuming part and the bit that really you need to get right and spend that time on okay so now we're getting to the tree here those branches so we go back to mat and we essentially just paint over that because what we're telling the software is that there are things here that i want you to resample okay and give it a few seconds and there we go it selected those branches really well so we can see them now and we want to tell it that i want you to select that lamppost and re resample it okay which it's done but here i want to tell it to fill in that that's the background okay so we just we don't want to go right to the edge because it, the software will do that for you can you see that how we did that and here very small area zoom in reduce the size of the brush and just roughly fill in don't go right to the edge and it should detect the edges and there you go it's done that and i think we're done yeah that's foreground okay i just want to reselect this area because i think there's a little bit of mismatch there yeah that's reflections i think of the sky let me just uh, go into foreground and tell you this is the foreground so don't get confused with the background it's probably because the sky was being reflected in that that's it because when you get a reflection it does confuse it glass and mirrors and water always confuses 
software when you're talking about selection okay so i'm happy with that so what we want to do is put that selection on a new layer so in this refine dialog box always don't forget this output option don't just have it as a selection you can save yourself a step by actually saying put the selection on a new layer so you don't have to do that as a separate step afterwards okay so now you can see that the selection is on a new layer okay so if i delete the underneath if i um, disable the, the 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 base layer you can see we've we've selected the foreground okay uh, and of course so he's got the checkerboard pattern so that's the selection we need both and what we now need to do is to bring our sky in. Now you could open the sky, copy it, paste it, but in fact in, in, in this software in Affinity, it's, you have another feature called place. So you want to place the file. Now my particular sky photograph is on the desktop, but obviously you will know where yours is. You will need to have identified the, um, the, the image in the first place. So file, and we don't want to open, we want to place. And then it will say, well, where is the file? So I'll go to uh, my desktop. And it currently labeled its replacement sky. Click there. And then just... Now, if it doesn't appear the right orientation, don't worry. Just grab the, uh, the handle and change it round. That... Uh, may happen okay and then just position it now you always want it a little bit larger than the size it's not that large larger than your canvas and i'll explain why in a moment so first of all what we want to do well, let's just increase the size of that a little bit first of all what we want to do is to make sure that the replacement sky is in the right order so we just put it in between so i'm just dragging that layer in between the cutout layer and the base layer so it sandwiches in between can you see that so i'll put it back up and it's sitting on top and this is a fundamental um, uh, understanding of how layers work so sandwich that layer in between and suddenly the sky is behind it now this is where having the sky layer a slightly larger than um, the, the canvas it means that as long as you've got the move tool selected up here move and resize is you can position it now this particular sky has got some trees here and of course those trees aren't appropriate they're the wrong size for the fact that we're right by a building so you'd want to obscure those trees no point cutting them out you just explore ex obscure them by moving them out the way so if you look down here, down here, as I move that layer, I'm just obscuring the tree. Yeah, you could have a little bit of it peeking out, but I don't want it. So that's it. I'm happy with that. Yeah, you could stretch the, the, the sky a little bit if you wanted to, but don't overdo that unless you really need to do it. Okay. And, uh, and obviously if you, that's done, but if, obviously if you wanted to uh, add an adjustment layer just to the sky, so you just go down to the adjustment layer in the layers palette and uh, just a simple levels or curves adjustment will probably do. So just move it across here. But the thing to remember is that levels adjustment layer needs to apply to the sky only. And the best way to guarantee that is to drag it underneath it and then to the right and when you get that indentation it becomes a daughter layer of that um, layer that you want to adjust in this case the replacement sky so they are joined together so whatever adjustments are make it only affects the sky not the foreground okay so now obviously you can make any adjustments and what we're doing is we want to make sure that the sky sits neatly and blends with the foreground 
as uh, as well as you can do it and obviously you can add all sorts of other adjustment layers but i'm just going to do this one just to demonstrate i want to keep that deep blue in there so i don't want to change that too much okay and that's it all done replacement sky is simple the key thing is is the selection of your foreground and the more complicated your foreground the more time you need to give it the replacement of the sky is the easy part and obviously you can adjust it to blend it in um, the thing to remember in affinity is file and place is the best option you place and then you just click and drag as i've just shown you to place the image and that then brings it in as its own layer um, straight away so i hope you enjoyed that and uh, got something out of it do give a give it a go and uh, share any comments in the comment section and like the video if you found it useful and of course if you haven't subscribed already what are you waiting for do us a favor and subscribe that really helps the channel it helps others and it keeps me going making videos so thanks very much and i'll see you next time